My mother made me homeless and in exchange, I took everything from her. Her home, her children, her job, and her entire life. This is a revenge story against one of the worst mothers of all time. My mother treated me beyond badly for most of my life as well as my younger siblings. I had to drop out of college and support myself after she drove me to homelessness. She proceeds to laugh at me about being homeless and denies all of her abuse. So, I ruin her life by getting my younger siblings removed and getting her arrested, making her lose her job, reporting her to the IRS, and set her up so that the remainder of her life is full of disaster and hardship. Here's what I did. Subscribe to Am I the Jerk on YouTube and hit the bell to turn on notifications. Backstory. My mother was a really terrible person. I have four other siblings, one older sister and three way younger, three different dads. Before I was born, I'm male by the way, my oldest sister was taken away from my mother when she was a few months old because she tried to stab slash slice the father of my sister while he was holding her. She lost custody and the dude left her. Older sister goes to live with her father's family in a different city. Q little old me coming into this world. My dad went to jail for two to three years after I was born for a while. I rarely saw him. He's an alcoholic if that matters. She was a single mother but made it work and she worked hard. One of her bigger problems was that she took out all of her aggression and hatred of my father on me as well as work and stress etc. She dealt with unspeakable acts happening to her growing up which I'm sure definitely affected her relationships and how she treated me as well. Anyways, cue the beyond terrible treatment of me from the age of about four to five to about 17. Every day was hell. She was extremely strict and her perspective was warped. She was also pretty big in stature and had a lot of strength. Examples of her being terrible, I've gotten beat up once because her room was dirty. The dishes weren't washed and I got beaten as soon as I got home. Even if there weren't dishes when I left to go to school. If I walked too loud, I'd get beat up. She broke my nose for looking at her the wrong way on my birthday when she bought me a cake that I was allergic to. It had peanuts and she knows and I'm slightly allergic but feigned ignorance. It was more or less every day or every other day. She used her fists, elbows, extension cords, hangers, chairs, canes, bats, etc. Whatever she could find. I could never escape to my room for long because she would always call me every few minutes to get her things or to yell at me. She never drank or did drugs or anything like that. Whenever she was upset and I happened to be in front of her, she'd kick me down the stairs to make me hurry up. She's put a knife to my neck before and had to be forcibly stopped by her boyfriend at the time. Burn my Christmas presents from other people. She didn't get me anything that year and just really other nasty things. The one thing I will say, she tried really hard to make up for it with video games and electronics, etc. It didn't make a difference to me though. It never helped. She controlled most aspects of my life. I got by with little petty revenges, peeing in the Lipton iced tea she drank, rubbing her forks and spoons between my... (laughs) between my butt cheeks before I served her dinner, ignoring her screams for help when she had kidney stones. How am I supposed to help anyways? But by the time I got to high school, I turned to drink. I resented her and the negative atmosphere affected who I was as a person. I started to be cold and uncaring, calculated. She started kicking me out every few months, telling me to find somewhere else to live. At 15, she sent me away to a different country for a year and tried to keep my passport, but I made it back to the United States with the help of the embassy and my stepfather. She'd already left by that time and found some other dude. I came back senior year with no credits for the prior grade, which ended up with me getting a GED. I spent most of the time I could with my best friend and started working pretty crappy jobs. I was terrible at saving and I had accumulated loads of bad habits while growing up, so it didn't make much difference. She eventually told me that if I went to college, I would always have a place to live until I finished. Cue my first two semesters at a two-year college. I maintained a three point seven ish GPA. My teachers loved me and it was my escape. Towards the end of my second semester during finals, I came home late one night around 10 p.m. and my mother yanks open the door, screaming in my face, asking when I'll move out. I'm slightly sloshed and decide to completely ignore her and walk to my room. If I opened my mouth, that day would be the day that I blew up and cursed her out. I've rarely ever raised my voice at her because it never ended well. Now at this point, I'm 19 years old and I've been doing school full-time with no savings. I'm also fairly fit and could easily take my mom at this point. 
time. I never laid a hand on her or any woman. I hate violence. I get to my room. She rips open my door and starts yelling. I say nothing and stare at her. She walks away and call the police on me saying that she thought that I would murder her and my younger siblings. I don't know where she got that idea from as she's the one who nearly killed me many times. I packed everything into a duffel bag and left five minutes afterwards. I failed all of my finals because I couldn't make it to my school. Things kind of spiraled and the next two to three years were me on and off homeless. I survived the best I could in a big city with no college degree and made a lot of bad choices due to my bad habits. Eventually, I found a profitable hobby that gave me meaning and through that, I started to work my way up. I got my own apartment, had a full-time job and did my hobby on the side. I hadn't kept contact with my mother at all, but my younger sister who was old enough to have a phone found me on social media so I saw photos and such. She didn't have it anywhere near as bad, but she did get struck occasionally. My mother reached out via email all smiles asking how I've been. Now guys, I've always been envious of the relationship most people have with their mothers, so I gave her a chance and I gave her a call. We talked for a few minutes and everything was civil and seemed like things would be okay, but then she asked me what I've been up to these last few years and I told her honestly that I was homeless for a while and I struggled a lot after what she did to me, but I worked my way out of it. She literally laughs. She laughed for a few seconds in a very condescending kind of chuckle and then said, Well, I never did a thing to you, so you don't know what abuse is. It's your own damn fault you were homeless. So how about you? But by that point, I hung up. I was speechless and fuming. I don't know what it is. Okay, B, I've spent too long letting you destroy my sanity. Now is the time. There were a few things my mother didn't know. One, I knew for a fact that the current well-paying job she had was gone on lies as she had never got her college degree and lied about it on her resume. Two, I had access to all of her email accounts and cloud storage accounts since I was the one that set them up when I was younger and she never changed her passwords. Lastly, she definitely wasn't aware that from 13 years old and on to the last time she struck me, I took photos of all of the bruises, marks, wounds, bloody noses and saved them to my computer and then Google Drive. And on top of that, my little sister had been sending me photos via social media of the bruises she got from her. The first thing I did was compile all of those photos and videos into one folder. I then reached out to CPS in my city and explained what was happening to my siblings and what happened to me in the past. And I had mountains of proof. Since I've called the cops to my mother before and the thing happened with my older sister, there was immediately a home visit. They arrived almost a day later with the police and coincidentally, my mother was literally in the process of giving out a whooping when they were knocking. Cue an emergency removal of all of my siblings from the house and my mother getting arrested, though she was released hours later. I was getting day-to-day play-by-plays because my mother's best friend is a blabbermouth and everything my mother said she told her son, who related to me, without either of their knowledge. I sent CPS all the evidence and there's a legit case against my mother now. The next day, I emailed and then called her job to inform them that she had lied about a very necessary college degree as well as current events in her life which sparked a background check. She was fired days later. Say adios to $75,000 a year and a blacklist in the only industry you know how to work. I then spitefully deleted every cloud account and email address I ever made for her, which was all of them, which I'm sure will make keeping up with a lot of bills and etc. nearly impossible. I then anonymously reported her to the IRS because of the tax fraud that she committed for years by claiming people's children that weren't hers with a lot of detailed information since I lived with her while she did it. So now my mother lost all of her kids and her job. I'm meeting with a caseworker from CPS next week to talk more about what happens moving forward, but I do know they're not going back. I don't know how she's going to pay her mortgage now and survive. I'm sure she's going to get a call from the IRS who will be looking for a few thousand dollars that she owes them. She also has to go back to court in a few months. Not exactly sure what she was charged with, but I'll update when I find out how everything turns out. Side note, she isn't aware that I am the cause of any of this. I plan on keeping tabs on her and waiting until it seems like she's close to death before I tell her it was all me and that I peed in her Lipton. An update from the future includes more information. Number one, I am psychologically not in the position to take care of my younger siblings or to take on a parental role. I came very close to unaliving two years ago and I'm just trying to work on my drink problem and the other habits that keep me in a cycle of instability. No, I haven't been to any programs or therapy. I don't think it will help me in regards to my nearly constant apathy 
empathy, and etc. Number two, my youngest two siblings weren't really bothered much. It was mostly my little sister after I left who got most of it, but luckily it wasn't anything near the level I had to deal with. Number three, I'm also incapable of taking custody because I don't have an apartment anymore due to bad decisions I made while sloshed recently. So I'm back to homeless, but I crash with a friend every once in a while. I am very well aware that I am an influence on my younger siblings and I'm trying to stay consistent with doing everything I can to be a better, more stable person for them so that maybe I can finally build a real relationship with someone in my family. I'm sorry to disappoint everyone who keeps wishing me more success. And lastly, number four, aside from my little siblings, I have zero contact with anyone else in my family. And even then it's been very rare because I've had to avoid my mother to see them and didn't want her knowing I kept in contact, meeting my little sister after school, FaceTime, etc. The rest of my family were well aware of what she did and distanced themselves. I don't plan on reaching out to them as I'm not good at maintaining relationships with mostly anyone anyways. I'm sorry for making this even longer than it already is. I'm sorry to anyone that I made feel sad after reading this. That wasn't my intention. To all the people who had to deal with something similar, I'm really sorry that that happened to you. I wish I could help you, but I don't know how I can. To all the people who disagree with my actions, I'm sorry I acted in a way that you didn't like. I just wanted to share my story. Also, for those concerned, my three siblings are currently being housed together and I made it very clear I will do anything to make sure they aren't separated, but I know that anything can happen. I stay in constant contact and they are all doing well. Lastly, everyone keeps telling me to look into therapy and AA, as well as people hinting that I may be depressed. I don't really know what my next step is in regards to that. I don't like to think about my feelings too much, but I do know I need to stop drinking. It doesn't help at all. So am I the jerk for utterly destroying my mother's life after what she did to me? This is honestly a devastating story. Really, no one wins. The mother is taking her anger and frustration out on the OP and siblings. The OP, the original poster, is getting revenge on the mother, which indirectly does harm the siblings because they are also benefiting from the mother's job. And the siblings overall don't even get to do anything. They're kind of just the victims of whatever happens to them, which is the saddest part. Obviously, in addition to what happened to the OP over the years. But where do you even go from a situation like this? How can you rebuild after all of that? And eventually, when the OP is able to take on the siblings, which I'm assuming the OP would want to do eventually, that's going to be tough, really tough. But at least the OP is aware that he isn't psychologically in the position to take care of the younger siblings, given everything that happened and the drink problem that he actually admits that he has. So what would you say to someone in a situation like this? Let me know down below. And of course, jerk or not a jerk and why? Am I the jerk for asking my wife not to cook for me anymore? I'm a 30 year old male and my wife is 26. She is a disaster in the kitchen. She leaves a huge mess behind after she's done with cooking. She uses a zillion utensils to make coffee. Don't ask me how, it's an unsolved mystery. Today, she said she learned this new recipe from her mom and went into the kitchen to prepare it. When she was done, it turned out to be vodka pasta. It tasted horrible because she added an entire bottle of vodka. She also put too much salt and it ended up tasting like salt with pasta on the side rather than pasta seasoned with salt. I told her to make whatever she wants only for herself and never for me and also to clean up in the kitchen after she's done cooking. To add, I've always cooked for us ever since we got married. I don't even mind cooking for her. She has no reason to cook for both of us. She says she wants to learn to cook, so I told her to make herself food and I'll taste a bit to tell her what she could do better. For some more information, I work as a chef at a restaurant and I work nearly 12 hours a day, so I have just enough time to get as much work done as possible at home and then go to sleep. When my wife cooks, the food turns out to be inedible and ends up in the trash. Then I have to clean up, cook again, and clean them again, once again. So it's so much work for me. She refuses to go to a cooking class too. I don't have time to teach her. So am I the jerk? The first question I have is why isn't she cleaning up after she makes this huge mess? If the person she's cooking for isn't even eating the food that she's cooking and he doesn't want that food, then why should she not have to clean up what she used to make that food? Especially if he has to go back in, clean her dishes, cook for himself again and clean those dishes a second time or pots and pans, whatever he's using. We don't know the situation between the husband and the wife here, but from what the husband's saying, it sounds like the wife doesn't respect his time when he's already working 12 hours a day and going through this whole process of of having to clean up after her and then make them brand new food every time. The easy solution here is just ask her to clean up after herself and say, hey, I would really, really want you to go to this cooking class or just hang back on cooking until I have more time to teach you in the future. I know a lot of people think that that is a very rude way to handle the situation, but if you don't communicate about what the actual issue is, how can she ever know what to fix? So let me know jerk or not a jerk and why. Am I the jerk for using my theater voice to scare my friend's annoying neighbor? I have 
performed in amateur theater for over 20 years and can now project my voice quite a distance thanks to the many roles I've had. This is important later. Two weeks ago, I was staying at my friend's house overnight because I was helping with renovations and it was just easier to stay the night and finish the renovation the next day than make two return trips. Plus, his wife is a great cook. They have told me many stories about their annoying neighbor across the road who complains when their kids are playing outside or they don't like seeing so many cars parked across the street when my friends are hosting a dinner party. WTH? So Sunday morning at 7.15 a.m., there is a rapping at my door and I open it as I was making coffee. It's the old witch neighbor telling me that I have to move my work truck now. It's parked in front of my friend's house because she has guests coming over for lunch at 11. 30. Never being at my best on an early Sunday, I go full King Lear, raising myself up and giving her a death stare and say, Be gone, you feculent hag, and take your miserable and selfish behavior with you. She screamed and ran away. A pretty good burst of speed for a 66-year-old, lol. I woke up everyone in the house, the neighbor's dogs on both sides went crazy barking, and a few people came out of their houses to see what was going on. I just waved and said, sorry. My friend thought it was hilarious, but his wife thinks that I am the jerk for waking up their kids and disturbing the neighborhood so early on a Sunday morning. So, am I the jerk for scaring the old bat and waking up the neighborhood? They haven't heard from her since. So, it is kind of strange that she would come over at 7 a.m. and her friends weren't coming over for hours and hours later. But that doesn't mean it was okay to basically yell at her. And the reason I say yell is because she screamed. The OP talks about how far he can project his voice and the fact that everyone around them, the neighbors not only heard it, but reacted to it by coming outside. So that must have been pretty loud. And his reason for doing that was based on what his friends told him and obviously being annoyed by what she was requesting as well. So I'm not saying she wasn't annoying, but getting that loud with her the very first time she asks you something is probably not the best way to handle it, even if it means that they didn't have to deal with her later. Since at the end, he says they haven't heard from her since then. So let me know what you think, jerk or not a jerk and why. Am I the jerk for deleting my friend's wedding photos in front of them. I'm not really a photographer. I'm a dog groomer. I take lots of photos of dogs all day to put on my Facebook and Instagram. It's my thing, if that makes sense. A cut and a photo with every appointment. I very seldom shoot things other than dogs, even if I have a nice setup. A friend got married a few days ago and wanted to save money. I asked if I'd shoot it for them. I told him it's not really my forte, but he convinced me by saying he didn't care if they were perfect. They were on a shoestring budget and I agreed to shoot it for $250, which is nothing for a 10 hour event. On the day of, I'm driving around following the bride as she goes from appointment to appointment before the ceremony, taking photos along the way. I shoot the ceremony itself in the reception. I'm shooting the speeches and people mingling. I started around 11 a.m. and was due to finish around 7.30 p.m. Around 5 p.m. food is being served and I was told I cannot stop to eat because I need to be the photographer. In fact, they didn't save me a spot at any table. I'm getting tired at this point and kind of regretting doing this for next to nothing. It's also unbelievably hot. The venue is an old veterans legion and it's around 110 degrees Fahrenheit and there's no air conditioning. I told the groom that I need to take off for 20 minutes to get something to eat and drink. There's no open bar or anything. I can't even get a water and my two water bottles are long empty. He tells me I need to either be the photographer or leave without pay. With the heat, being hungry, being generally annoyed at the circumstances, I asked if he was sure and he said yes. So I deleted all the photos I took in front of him and I took off saying I'm not his photographer anymore. If I were to be paid the $250, honestly, at that point, I would have paid $250 just for a glass glass of cold water and somewhere to sit down for five minutes. Was I the jerk? They went right onto their honeymoon and they've all been off of social media, but a lot of people have been posting on their wall asking about the photos with zero responses. So am I the jerk for deleting my friend's wedding photos in front of them? The groom is the one who sounds like the jerk here. I get that it's really stressful in certain situations when you want things to go just right, but taking it out on the person who's doing a favor to you to try to help you is not the play. Maybe in the groom's mind, he thought he was doing the OP a favor by paying him the $250, not realizing how much wedding photography can cost. But even if that was the case, how could he not account for just getting his friend some food and water and just sitting down for a minute? It just seems so heartless. And in the future, he's probably going to really regret not having all those photos of his wedding because it sounds like nobody else was taking photos professionally. So who do you think was the jerk in this situation? The groom or the photographer OP? Let me know down below.
When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories in this series, use the playlist at the top of the description. And next time you live stream, use the cream of the crop music. Search for cream of the stream on Spotify or whatever music platform you use for copyright free music to use for your stream. It's free cream of the stream. Either way, thanks a lot for listening. We'll see you guys next time.